Welcome back to His and Hers Movie Podcast. This is episode number 39, featuring a review of a film that just got released this week in the theater, and I have literally not heard a single person talk about it. It is titled The Empty Man. More on that later. It is October 24th at the time of recording this. Um, Halloween is almost here. I am one mm-hmm. half... What's that? It's almost over, oh, you mean. It is almost over. Mm-hmm. I am one half of your hosting duo, JP, and you just heard her. That's Carly. We're podcasting out of Southwest PA on this actually pretty nice fall night. Yeah, it's uh, rather cold out tonight. Uh, yesterday was very it's hot. Cold. It's chilly. It's rather freezing, in my opinion, but I am cold easily. It's cold, okay? When you go from, like, 80 degrees to 50, it's cold. All right? All right. But uh, it is a nice fall night. I will say that. You know, it's not rainy. Um, I spent the day carving pumps with my family. Uh, Two pump experiences in a row, because you and I did that as well last night. And then I went over there, and we carved more, and it was nice. My aunt, she's crazy. She goes overboard for everything. She bought, like, 16 pumpkins to pick from, and there was, like, seven of us there. (laughs) And it's just... What'd you do with the rest? She just, I don't know, she'll probably just use them as decor. Well, one, <laughs> it's a good thing she bought them because some people screwed them up. Like, uh, my cousin Tyler, his girlfriend's brother was there and he, like, started carving it and he was digging so hard into the bottom that he cut a hole at the bottom and then he ended up carving, like, a face, this just giant mouth using the hole at the bottom and it looked horrible, so he had to use another one. So it's good to have backup pumps when you have a lot of people, but... Uh, so, and she had like paints if you wanted to paint them. I was, I almost considered doing that, but I thought, I shall, I like carving pumpkins, so I'm gonna do that instead. My mom painted her pumpkin though, but we did that, then we took some pics of them, they looked all cool together, all lit up, and I took it home with me, and now I have two pumps. So, uh, successful year of that, uh, carving pumpkins in October, um, I must say. So, it was a nice day. It was a nice day, and mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm just sad, because October's almost over, and I'm, like, not done. Yeah, but one good thing is Italian Horror Month's next month. That's not at all a good we thing. We shall review <laughs> all Italian films. Who's we? Sh- you mean 22 shots? No, me and you. When Italian? No, that's not what our show's about. It's Italian Horror Month, buddy. No, it's his and hers is about reviewing new movies, so I'm not going to do Italian Horror Month. Why? I shall be very upset because I don't like Italian movies. Okay. We'll just well, add a third movie to the week. No. <laughs> Listen, dude, I hate the, like I hate Giallo. Giallo. Well, I well, I'll give you a couple that aren't Giallo. Like we definitely have to at least do some Italian horror stuff on here. I thought you were kidding. Italian horror month is not real. Okay, you just guys made just made it up. It up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made it up. So it's, it's became not like, real. People use it. They're like, it's like horror month. Like, Shark Week is... No. Shark Week is real, so that makes sense. But oh, what about that? We boring. did Shark Week, and that wasn't new. That was... That wasn't... That wasn't... That was real, is what I'm saying. That's my argument. That's, like, actually Italian something that everyone... Italian Horror Month is upon us. We shall do Italian Horror Month. Dude, can, can you get, like, a new host for this one? Like... Nope. Get moods to come on and do the show then no. all November. Alright. I'll do some Italian horror. Okay, dude, whatever. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so. Uh, dude, this week is like a blur to me. Like, I don't even remember what I did. Like, yeah. I, I, me, me and you were talking, and I'm like, wow, I haven't watched anything. Um, I watched, like, a lot of TV and other stuff. I, I didn't have to prep for 22 shots so much. So I kind of, uh, this week, since we were off this week, so I kind of just relaxed a little bit because I've been watching so many movies. It kind of disappointed me when I looked at my numbers because I'm like, wow, I didn't watch anything this week. But Mm -hmm. somehow I am still, I don't know, reviewing a film every day, so I I must have had a couple stocked up. (laughs) Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I watch not that much at all either this week and it's not like I think we were were recording well it's like we recorded what Sunday and today's Saturday so I think I technically watch something every day but one of them was my blind spot and then the other night 
you and I obviously went to see The Empty Man, which is for a main review. Mm-hmm. And you and I watched a few things together last night as well. But besides that, I didn't really go overboard this week either. It's weird. Mm-hmm. So, but it is what it is. Oh, wait, and... I, I did watch something. I forgot about a couple. Cool. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, th- this week is pretty fun week for me because uh, I watched the fights today um, mm. which was pretty cool then we hung out yesterday so let's I guess reverse a little bit uh, didn't do anything like major during the week uh, just watched stuff and, and kind of hung out but on Friday which was yesterday uh, went and hung out with you and then we went to where did we go um, we went to the mall for a quick second. Well, I went to... <laughs> this made me mad. We went oh, yeah. to Walmart because Tremors uh, Shrieker Island came out, and I wanted to pick up the blue, and they were sold... Or no, they hadn't restocked their shelves yet. So, And I went back again today to look, and they still haven't restocked their, stocked their shelves. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing one of those like quarterly transitions where they like pretty much refresh everything. And I usually like those because there's usually some cool new stuff, but I was kind of annoyed because they they didn't have anything out. And it was like, dude, it's like a week before Halloween and you guys aren't putting any, there's no moves to pick from on the shelves. And I got to say, they, Walmart did an absolute atrocious job on Halloween this year. Maybe their worst ever. Yeah, there was really nothing exciting there. I, I do agree. And, and yeah, you're right. The only the things ball. they had was like those glow in the dark Universal mm-hmm. Monster covers and Halloween and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's nothing like new or exciting. No, they Not, did those like the last three years. Yeah, it's no. They usually put out a lot of other cool classic movies and stuff like that, but it's like the same old crap that you find there all the time, like Pet Cemetery again and stuff like that. It's just. Mm. pretty stupid they definitely dropped the ball and they dropped the ball on not restocking the shelves i didn't even think about that it's like the last weekend of october and people want to go out and get scary movies and there's no movies so that sucks walfart that sucks yeah so that was disappointing but uh that film is on netflix so if anybody can't find it at their walmart it is on netflix Mm. Uh, more on that later that was supposed to be our featured review tonight what listen dude I am just I'll be honest it's all me I just did not feel like watching it because I find that I'm not crazy about Tremors like everyone else for one and for two I don't think I watched like the uh, maybe the last either the last sequel or the last two sequels or something like that so I'm not as versed in it and I feel like I wouldn't have got it wouldn't have like really struck me as much as it does for you because I know you're a big fan of the franchise and I didn't want to sound like a negative Nelly and like hate on it right. when it doesn't deserve it so I said no okay well plus we're supposed to like we actually had some options in the theater for the first time in a while right so I more on that later <laughs> Everything is being because done I just found out something that I am mad about, and I will share it with you uh, live and in the flesh for the first time because you don't know what I'm going to say. So, oh no! Yeah, and it's your oh. fault. I'll just uh, prefix this by saying that. Dude, come on! That makes me sad. Why can't you just say it now? Nope. Um. So yeah. Uh. What else? Mm, kind of. Uh. Today. Oh yeah. So after we went to Walmart, uh, we went to the mall, which sad to say it's pretty much dead it's, it's gonna die soon um our local mall uh we went in there to go to spirit of halloween walked right back out because it was literally like so many people in there a big huge line i just wanted to see if they had this cool halloween two cup that i passed on earlier in the year and uh i was like yeah i'm not gonna go in there right now so we just bounced and there was like a little uh, za place and and we got a slice of za which I've always liked there za it's pretty good uh, it is so I got mushroom and pepperoni which is in my opinion the most classic pizza you can do yeah I got black olives and pepperoni and I haven't done that in a while but I do like black olives on do you like black olives on pizza or do you hate it no I do like them but I just I okay. always feel like I'm wasting a topping if I get them 
because I can't really taste them all the time. It, it's more of like a textured mm-hmm. thing. I don't know. They have a very mild taste. That is true. I never really thought about that, but I've always liked them. So I mean, that's what I got. have a very mild taste too, but they they add a texture thing that I like the pizza. Mhm. I feel. I feel. But that so, was pretty good. Yeah, and then uh, we were like. Okay, let's go see this move then. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, went and saw the move. Uh, went back home, and we kind of chilled for a minute, and then we carved a pumpkin each. I just went with a classic jack o' lantern, and you went with a um, what was it like a Jason bunch of polka Matt. dots or something? Jason <laughs> Matt. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. Listen, dude. Okay, so I try like I try to do something creative every year, and I do. You're trying to say mine isn't creative? No, I'm just saying I try to do. Say I don't do mine without stencils. No, I'm trying to say like I do something based off a horror movie every year. Like one year I did Jack from The Shining. One year I did Michael Myers. Last year I just did a very simple ghost face. I mean, you can't really screw that up. Uh, but this year, I was like, I'm going to try a Jason mask, because it did not look that hard. And I shall admit, it did not come out that great. The proportions were a bit off. The holes in it were not that big. And I, I have a, I've always, even drawing on paper, I have a problem where I just draw too tiny. I think I get nervous where I think if I make it too big, then I can't, there's no way I'm going to be able to go back on it. So I play it safe and do things too small. So it was a little too small, but at the end of the day, I tried, and I still thought it looked kind of cool. Okay, so you get a ribbon for trying, uh, and I win a championship for making a good pump. Okay, dude, well, if they could have seen your... Which, by the way, I'm buying nail polish. I was just going to give advice. I'm buying nail polish for mover next year to... uh, Why, does it take off Sharpie? Yeah, I was doing, we had it at my cousin's, or, yeah, my cousin's today, and uh, it was taking it off pretty well afterwards, so. That's good, yeah, we need to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I would like to get some sort of, like, graph paper or something, like, stencils that I could use, because I'm not good, like, there's one thing that I've never been good at, and it's any type of art. Like, you might think that i might be decent at art considering i make like pretty cool thumbnails for 22 shots but that is not the same and one that took me a long time to get even slightly good at that and Mm. then two it is just literally like more of a puzzle than than art (laughs) and but i mean doing it on a pumpkin it's one thing to draw on paper but then you draw it on a pumpkin that's already all curvy and then you have to cut try to cut it out perfectly it's it's hard. It's hard stuff. So I we think should I'm get a much cool better stencils. cutter than a lot of people, honestly. I suppose. So anyway, uh, we carved some pumpkins. Uh, again, we didn't make pumpkin seeds, which like you got to get more um, ambitious with that. I'm too lazy, but if if you're forcing me to do it, I'll do it. You're annoying, dude, because you want thing, you want so much awesome stuff to happen, but you just want to sit there on the couch while it happens <laughs> around you. I, my, my old principal used to say, like, there's three people in this world, those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who say, what happened? You're the last two. You watch things I'm the happen, last two? Yeah. You watch things happen, a.k.a. me being successful, and then you sometimes are like, wait, what happened? What did and happen? You, yeah, you want to change that and become someone who makes it happen like make it happen bring bring do stuff do stuff bring stencils bring uh i don't know sharpies bring newspaper to throw down do, do some things no you come on little guy like i feel like i need to get like a a taser or what do you call that a taser? shocker thing and be like come on come on and like hit you with it no don't hit me with things uh anyway so um, as I was saying, we carved some pumpkins. While we were carving pumpkins, we decided to throw on good old Goosebumps eps. Mm-hmm. Watched a couple of those. Uh, what do we have? Say Cheese and Die. Say Cheese and Die Again. Um, Night of the Living Dummy. Is that the only three we watched, or was there a fourth one in there? I think that was the only three. Yeah, so we had those on. Pretty fun. You know, Goosebumps is nowhere near as good as Are You Afraid of the Dark, but I'm still a pretty big fan of it. 
And then we went and hung out in the living room. And what did we watch? Um, first, we watched uh, Beavis and Butthead. Uh, Halloween but special. Oh, I don't know what it's called. But oh, but oh, ween. I knew it was something with a butt. And uh, I didn't grow up watching Beavis and Butthead at all. I, it's, I had a video game of them on the Sega Genesis. Yep. But that was like I've had that too. Yeah, that was my only familiarity with them. I didn't watch the show or anything like that. But um, I thought that I thought that it special was But was funny. Lord of the Harvest. Oh, okay. Technical. Uh I thought it was fun. I like I like the beginning when they're watching that movie and it's like, "Come on, Tina, you act like you don't even want to get it on." Then you instantly <laughs> hear a chainsaw and they're just like, <laughs> 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 um, "But yeah, I, like there were really two kind of people in the world. There was people mm-hmm. who liked Beavis and Butthead and people who didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and Beavis and Butthead to me, I liked it. I can get why people think like the." <laughs> 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 who, who is like annoying <laughs> all the time it gets old a little bit I could see that but as somebody who grew up with the series it doesn't for me you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I mean like I said I was into it at first I was laughing I thought it was pretty funny I thought you hate I don't Cornholio. know yeah just I, I do I hated Cornholio. I just thought it was a little too goofy. It kind of killed the... I didn't find it funny. That's the problem. I thought it was too stupid. Like, oh, he's on a sugar high now and he's Cornholioing. I don't know. Dude. And then that, that's like how the whole I, rest I'm of the episode high. goes. Yeah, that's not funny. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Whenever the kids come up to the house and he's eating the candy and they look in and he's yeah, like, ah! That's, that's real funny. Yeah, but up in, up until that part, it was hilarious. Like, the guy, the Hank Hill voice actor, like, in the other room on the phone, and he's like, what the hell? Get out of my house! What in the hell? Yeah. You, uh, you, but, know that, you know that's Mike Judge who does that voice, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot what his name was. Mike Judge. And yeah, okay, you know what else judge. voice he does? Yeah, King of the Hill. And you know what else voice he does? Um, I think I used to. I don't remember. Uh, Beavis. Oh, really? Yeah, and you know what else voice he does? What? Butthead. Really? Yeah. Did he create the show? Yeah, you know what else the other voice he does? Mr. Van Treat... Van... What is his name? Van Treason? The, the guy that gives them the uh, organic walnut cookies <laughs> or the stickers. <laughs> he's like Seth MacFarlane where he's just doing all the voices on his show and the... Uh, yeah, he is like Seth MacFarlane. In fact, Seth MacFarlane considers him a pretty big influence. Oh, really? Yeah. That's Anybody? weird. I, I literally did not know that. Yeah, you. he also does like Bobby Hill's voice. Or no... Bobby Hill's voice is not done by him. But he does he does a lot of voices. Wait, did he also create King of the Hill? Yeah. Oh, that's yep. crazy. That, they're very different shows. I yeah, well, he created King of the Hill based on that character, Mr. Ben, or, uh, Mr. Anderson from Beavis and Butthead. Like, that, that he, is Hank. That's supposed to be, like, the pre... Like, uh-huh. a, a more fleshed-out version of Hank. They dropped some of the stuff, but... Like, he, that one's more oblivious, even though Hank's pretty oblivious, too. <laughs> that makes sense. Like, the animation, when I think about them, they do look similar. Mm-hmm. Obviously, King of the Hill is a little better, but, like, yeah, I can, like, the eyeballs and stuff, I can see it. So, yeah, like, King, of the Hi- King of the Hill ran till 2010. Oh, okay. Which is kind of crazy to think about now, mm-hmm. because I didn't think that it ran that long, honestly. Um, I thought I thought it was I didn't even know it ended. Yeah, honestly. unfortunately, I've seen every episode multiple times. It's probably my honestly, it's it's probably my favorite animated show. Uh, see, I it, it was one of those shows they used to play that and Family Guy back to back on yep. Adult Swim. I always Swim. watched that, and I would be sad when Family Guy came on, but I would watch I was, it anyway. And then they mm-hmm. did Futurama as well. Did you like Futurama? Yep, love it. Better than Family Guy. See, I was I would like watching Futurama and 
it's so funny that Adult Swim stuff on Cartoon Network because I was a kid and I didn't understand. I was like, oh, like these are just bad cartoons now that are on TV because I'd still be up for that. And but I, I don't know. I like Futurama and Family Guy, but King of the Hill. I think because I was young, I was like not finding it funny. So I always think I hate King of the Hill. But maybe if I watched it now, I would find it funny. I never really went. Back um, to you would channel. probably love it if you watched it with me. It's it's like a much better Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Like in terms of the, it has different humor, but it, it's like the, some of the ideas are still there. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the the thing about um, King of the Hill that I love is just the characters grow like they're actually in a in a like live action sitcom. Mm -hmm. Like Bobby ages, like the the neighbor kid ages. You know, like think like things happen that like Luann gets pregnant and she meets Lucky and they get married and it ha you know it's you know a lot of animated shows are just like single episodes yeah yeah like I mean Family Guy's just Stewie's a baby for 20 years mm -hmm. yeah um which is crazy it's <laughs> so stupid uh but Beavis and Butthead is a show that uh got revived in 2011 after King of the Hill ended and it lasted one season. Apparently, uh, it was a rating success. It was the second best show on MTV, but it, uh, behind Jersey Shore, which at that time that show was mo monstrous. And uh, but the demographic for MTV at the time was like 12 to 14 year old girls, and that uh, wasn't what Beavis and Butthead did. So they kind of uh, pulled the plug on it after one season, which is unfortunate. But I remember they they were making fun of Twilight in the like premiere, like one of the first episodes. I have the uh, fourth season on DV or well, it's not technically the fourth season; it's like the eighth season or something. But I have it on DVD or Blu-ray, but I've never actually watched it. I watched a couple of them when they aired, and I've always kind of saved them because uh, growing up, it was definitely one of my favorite shows, mm. and like. I'm weird like that. Like, I've never watched the seventh scene of Zen of Tales from the Crypt all the way through. And, and which, I mean, <laughs> part of it is because that season actually is, like, not good. But I also don't want it to end. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. kind of weird like that. Like, it, I don't want to show that. Like, I've never watched the last season of The Office. I've watched all the seasons up to the last season multiple times and never watched the last season. Same thing with How I Met Your Mother. Never finished it. Um... It's oh, just that I didn't I want to save it. You've never finished How I Met Your Mother? I haven't finished How I Met Your Mother. I but I you know how it ends. Oh, uh, okay. I couldn't avoid the spoilers for the last decade. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Which is another one of my favorite shows. Oh, that's what I wanted to watch. I wanted to watch The Slutty Pumpkin. Which is one oh. of my favorite um, Halloween episodes of the show. Oh, didn't we watch that? That's where, that's, isn't that one of the first episodes? Yep. I think so. But there's also the Slutty Pumpkin Returns. Ooh. Yeah. The sequel. Yep. Uh, a couple seasons later, I think. Um, that is a show that if we're ever, like, around each other for a longer period of time, I would absolutely love to watch that show with you. Right. The, right. There's certain shows that I just love to show people. Um, I've gotten, like, 17 people hooked on How I Met Your Mother. Pretty impressive, buddy. Yeah. And The Office. I was, like, one of the first people actually watching The Office. Before. Yeah. See, I don't know about The Office. I tried to watch it without you, and I was bored. No. I watched crazy. it with you, and it was funny because you and I were laughing at it together. Sometimes I need that, like, other person to laugh. It's like I, I think need you someone just stand there with your arms crossed, and you're like, man. No, I'm not like man. I want to laugh. That's what's sad. I want to laugh, but a lot of times I find I have a problem where I almost need to, like, have someone else laugh at it first and it it's just like makes it funnier. It's like somebody to show you how to laugh. I get it. Well, I mean, when you put it like that, it's like depressing. I mean, it's just like I need... I'm just like, yeah, that is really funny. But I'm not... I don't know, buddy. I don't know. I laughed out loud. It's super bad. And I was happy that I did because I was afraid that that, someone, that would not be funny. But. Yeah. Um. But the whole thing with like... Uh, Beavis and Butthead is they actually I forgot but they did revive it for a second revive oh really 
yeah, uh, but this time on Comedy Central. So they announced that back in July. Hmm. I see. I see. Comedy Central. That would be probably ideal. Yes, it is ideal. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, you know that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I think that's uh, a pretty dope thing. I'm excited to see what they do. I don't, I, see, the last time they revived them, they did not. They did not um, age them or anything. Mm-hmm. But it was just in in, in present time. Right. But I yeah. think like present time now is pretty interesting because it is like a lot has changed in ten years. Like even just with, yeah. Like, political correctness and all that stuff so that could be kind of cool to see what they do there um but yeah i I think it's a pretty good beavis and butthead episode uh it's like one of the cornholio episodes which there's like a handful of them i know you didn't like that but i mean that's kind of one of the more popular things from that series (laughs) usually people like that yeah, it was just a little stupid to me, but I'm not, I mean, I'll give them another shot, because I like, I thought those music videos you used to show me were funny, too, where they were making fun right. of. Right. Well, see, that's so. the problem with Beavis and Butthead, too, mm-hmm. is, um, they, they did, they, they've never released this series properly. So there yeah. were two separate releases, um, the Time Life series release, which came in I think it it actually was a little more complete, but it came in volumes. And then they released the Mike Judge collection uh, in, I don't know, like 2008 or something like that. I picked all three of them up. But essentially, it is just a collection of the segments. And Uh, there's like, I think, three volumes. And... It, it's not all the episodes because Mike Judge was really unhappy with some of them and he I think he has a lot of um, like ownership of the series that's why he's able to like self revive it essentially mm-hmm. uh, but he's like he was like unhappy with like certain uh, episodes so he just kind of never put them on disc or like put them out uh, and, and I, I honestly agree like some of the quality is like really garbage on some of them and some of them are funny but um, I would always like to have like a complete collection um, and also so the problem is with releasing it too is Beavis and Butthead how the show was consisted it was like a little segment of what's happening like the Butterween thing like them mm-hmm. sitting in their house and the doorbell keeps ringing and then it's them watching a music video and then it goes uh, back to that and then maybe a commercial break and then back to a music video there's like two music videos on each episode <laughs> um, which they did that primarily to cut cost of animation and doing a longer episode mm. because it's just them sitting on the couch and they're watching music videos talking over it yeah so um, that but th- the problem is, is that you can't get rights to like well, you can get them but you have to go and clear the rights to every song so you never really could release it fully each episode so it was what they would do is they would just release all the cartoon segments of the episodes on the Mike Judge collection and then they would release like bonus features they would have like I don't know like 10 to 15 of the music video segments but I there's like tons that I've never released and funny enough um, I actually, when I was a kid, I was pretty much allowed to watch anything ever but Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> My path did not allow me to watch Beavis and Butthead, and we had a tape. It was a two-hour tape that was a, a recorded a, 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 a marathon. It was like a six-hour tape. I don't remember how, like, I think six hours was, like, the biggest tape you could get, VHS tape. and Or maybe it was eight, but I had a six-hour tape of a Beavis and Butthead marathon. And uh, me, and, it was like the holy grail to me and my cousin. I don't know who gave it to us, but it was just all Beavis and Butthead. We just loved it, mm-hmm. and we used to watch it over and over again. And my pap took it from us, and I don't know whatever happened to it. Oh, 
What a jerk. Yeah, he thought they were too stupid and it would like make us stupid. Sick. Yeah, I could I could see him thinking that. Yeah, but, but uh, pretty much was able to watch anything else. So yeah, we watched that and then we watched It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Which a lot of people don't like. Yeah, I saw uh I, I, for the first time, I mean, I thought everybody liked it, but for the first yeah. time I saw, like, Chris Lax doesn't like it. Yeah, that's what I saw. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I get I it. I kind of understand not grow. yeah, if you didn't grow up on that. Which I didn't either. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I grew up on, i seen some of it. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've seen the Peanuts. See, the thing about the Peanuts is they're not really... They're not traditional cartoons where it's like, you know, plot and then issue and then resolution. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Like, the ending to The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, is just... Well, it's ju- it's just that there might be a Great Pumpkin, but there's probably not. <laughs> yeah, I actually... I didn't remember it because I... Like, I grew up with them a little bit. I feel like every time I watched the Charlie Brown specials was in school, like elementary school. They played them anytime Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Halloween were coming around. They would play whatever one was, you know, the special for that. And that's mainly when I would watch them. So it's not like I would, a lot of these people, you know, I see a lot of adults who are like, yeah, I gotta watch it every year, gotta watch it every year. But I was never really like that, but I always enjoyed them. I, I found them funny and cute and stuff like that. So, but yeah, watching The Great Pumpkin, I even kind of thought to myself, I was like, oh, that was kind of sad. Like, I, in yeah, my but that, head. Yeah, that's kind of like what, like, the peanuts are about. Like I said, they're kind of melancholy. Well, I got, like, I had a Mandela effect where I could have sworn the Great Pumpkin comes at the end. <laughs> and it didn't. So I was, like, kind of sad. But, I mean, the Peanuts is like a comic strip type of thing, too. That's what they're based off of. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I enjoyed the Great Pumpkin, though. I thought it was fun to watch. I like, um, I like how it starts and how it's just, like you know them walking with the music playing and then they carve the pumpkin and he's like you didn't say you were gonna kill it that was sad uh yeah (laughs) and then of course um you got the the classic um just the old school animation man i I just love that Mm. type of stuff so it's so weird watching animation is weird to me because i'm always it, it feels current because it's not like actors it's just animation Mm -hmm. um so when i think like oh this came out like before my mom was born it's really weird to think about that because you don't uh, i don't know it looks like the animation looks like outdated old-fashioned animation but at the same time it's not like regular movies where it's like oh these actors are dressed this way and they're talking this way so clearly it's from the 60s it just feels so weird when you realize how old stuff is kind of like with scooby-doo too it's like wow that show's really old at this point yeah it's from the 60s as well yeah um but okay so uh after that we just threw on some eli roth's history of horror we watched the zombies one and then we played the uh Slashers. Slashers part one. I fell asleep during that one. I've seen both of those episodes before, but I couldn't really remember them. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that. Uh, I would go back and try to watch the other episodes. I think they're fun to just kind of put on. out right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I feel like you're not really learning a ton from it that you may not already know if you, you know, know these movies. But I think it's just a fun thing to put on in the background and or if you just want to watch something to turn your brain off to it's interesting to watch this type of show so i kind of want to go back and watch the other episodes that we didn't get to mm-hmm. I, I i like it too it's pretty cool mm-hmm. um so yeah and then i went home and watched some tv and that was that was our our pre-halloween adventure yeah i thought it was a pretty good time but next week we have real Halloween, and we're actually going to do our marathon on Halloween this year. Mm-hmm. We are. So, those of you who don't Saturday. know, go ahead and explain what we do. This, I believe, will be the fourth year we're doing it. Yes. So, uh, four years ago, we decided to do this little Halloween event, and um, 
Originally, it was me, you, and our friend Matt uh, who were involved with it, where we all pick a move, and the move is supposed to be something that's one kind of like maybe obscure, uh, you know, something like the way that I say it is not like Halloween. Your goal is to find a film that nobody there's seen, including you, that is the greatest, most obscure, most on point, most funny, most mind blowing, most awesome, most epicness movie that you could find. Now, where you actually land from that very far away target is, you know, up to your pick. But that's what the goal is. You're supposed to be shooting for that exact thing. Mm-hmm. And you could take that multiple ways. Like, you might pick a film that is just so ridiculous, like Patrick Still Lives and try to see if that'll work and be like a fun film for the group or you can try to take it like real serious like me and pick something like miss 45 which i was just trying to find a really great movie uh that didn't play so well in front of the group so it's kind of uh up up to you what you come up with uh but so continue good yeah i mean it's kind of like it it's the interesting thing you're I think the main goal we all have is trying to find something that we've never seen before like none that's of, definitely my seen. primary goal like I, I want to pick something that you guys haven't seen because like Matt last year picked a movie that was in black well it was a body snatchers um yeah and which that's I had heard of film. that movie yeah so um yeah it's pretty interesting uh this year uh, Matt might not be able to come but uh Austin so yeah, he's definitely sh- not doing a pick then yeah so Austin, uh, you know, one of the Schroyers and my co-host on Movie vs. Movie, he is throwing in a pick, and uh, so we'll have a total of three movies that each of us pick, and we don't know what the pick is. It's a surprise up until we reveal it to the group when we go to put it into the player. Uh, but to uh, start out the night, we do a classic film, like the one year we did What Evil Dead um yeah like so year one we started with uh stage fright and then yeah. we went into my uh matt's pick which was possession your pick which was son of sleepaway camp which actually just got a blu-ray release finally yes yeah, uh, and then my pick was miss 45 and then our headliner which is the film that is a brand new film that none of us have seen was 1922 i think i believe yeah it was and then the following year, we started off with a good old uh, Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. And then we went into Matt's pick of Cold Skin, which was pretty good. Yeah. And then we went in into Patrick Still Lives, which was your pick. Yeah. And then mine was Pontypool, which, again, I missed the mark. I went for something really good. And it is a really good movie. It just didn't play well with a group. And then uh, our headliner was su- su- uh, Summer oh, of 84. Summer of 84. I yep. Yeah. And then, but uh, Patrick Still Lives is getting a Blu-ray release, too. I know. Same company. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, weird. Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, oh. Or is it Severin? It might be Severin, I think. Patrick Still Lives might be Severin. I think Mask or Memorial Day Massacre was Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah, it is. I know that for sure. Um, and then... The last year, we started off with a good old classic of Pumpkinhead, I believe. Oh, yeah. I forgot what it was last year. And then we did... Oh, uh, I think Matt's we... Matt's pick, Body Snatcher, yeah. which mm-hmm. is, I think, the... Who's in there? Boris Karloff? Yes, I believe. Yeah. And then your pick was what? Uh, Hollow Gate. Which, again, kind of was the winner. <laughs> It was yeah, that one's a weird Halloween setting move that I bought at a as a bootleg at uh that convention we went to in Gettysburg and thought this would be great for Halloween. So Yeah. Maybe that maybe that'll get released soon. So that was again, I would say that that your film has made the most impact <laughs> uh like two of the three years. I think Possession kinda stole a show in the first one. Yeah. Um and then my pick was again i think i need to not go last is the thing i think i might go first or second this time Um, all right but my pick was uh the keep (laughs) which 
didn't really play well at all. But no. it's actually not a bad movie. Oh, um, I can't. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that was that. And our headliner last year was, what, In the Tall Grass? Yes. So, yeah, that's what we do. We start out with a classic move, then mm-hmm. we each take our turn, and then we end it with a new move. And Yeah, and this year, so we're going with our classic is going to be Children of the Corn. Mm-hmm. And then we will go into Austin's pick, my pick, and then Carly's pick. Oh. And then we will probably... I went in a different direction this year with my pick. Normally, I go with something that I'm going to try to just be a great movie that everybody blows everybody away. This time, I went with something a little bit more obscure. Oh, yeah? Yep. Changing it up. And in terms of, I honestly, personally think we should watch, like, seven movies. Personally. Because I feel like five is not enough. Yeah, last year, we were, last year we started, like, way late and still got done at, like, a decent time. Right, even me and you watched, like, six that one night. (laughs) Just me and you. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. That's why I feel like we need to, we need to have... Two classics, mm. one old, one new. So, like, one from pre-1970, oh. and then one post-1970. So, like, maybe you go a good old Frankenstein to start something black and white. And yeah. then you go into your Children of the Corn. And then you go into the three picks. And then either two featured... uh never seen brand new 2020 films or let's say one film that takes place on Halloween and a 2020 film or you could even reverse that do the 2020 film first and then like as an encore we could throw on like Halloween or you know Halloween 2 or Night of the Demons or something yeah it'd be cool too if we can just have more people involved with the picks but it's hard with work and making sure everyone can show up unfortunately but i thought you know i mean like it would have been cool if like matt and austin and you and i could have all had a pick this year because it's fun i'll tell you what next year we're definitely doing more because it'll be year five Mm. yeah but we it's cool that we've been keeping up with this every year yeah, well, I think no matter what, me and you will at least do it. I, I know Matt, like, it kind of sucks because we don't have, like, we don't have friends that are into this stuff. So it's like, you kind of want to invite your other friends to your, like, Halloween thing. But it's like. It's not like a. They, we're not. Like, we're, we're sitting, sitting there watching movies. movies. Like, I, I, and we're some people actually want to watch them and they don't want to talk. So it's like, kind of like, ah, what are you going to do? I stole this whole concept from Tom Horror's Ball, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. I see. You stole pretty much everything from everyone. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, so I I, I want to cr- cr- I want to sort of because we're thinking about having two headliners this year, depending on time. Uh, our headliner right now is Antebellum, but we were thinking about throwing the Craft in there. Mhm. Yeah, the Craft uh, and Antebellum. I'm someone was like talking about it at work of course the other day and I was like trying so hard not to listen because they were like ruining everything they watched it? yeah they watched it Hmm. on an illegal site because that's what they be doing Right. but uh yeah I don't remember what they even said but I was just like no but I'm so I still want to watch it I just want to check it out didn't you say it was getting like not many I thought it was getting like mediocre reviews Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what we're doing this week. Uh, we'll have some food and some snacks and some drinks and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, we're, we'll probably start around what, like noon, one o'clock ish and Mm. we'll go from there. And yeah, I, I definitely want to make it like this one. The thing is it's set on Halloween. I feel like we needed to do what like we, like, I feel like we underplanned for this. Mm Mm-hmm. Because this is the first that like this it won't be set on Halloween again for like seven years. Yeah, and it's a full moon. Well, well, let me put it: it won't be on a Saturday for like seven yeah. years. But like we could technically do it on Halloween again. But this is the first time we're doing it on Halloween. 
Yes. Um, it is pretty exciting. It is pretty exciting, and we are bad at planning things, but I'm going to try to make food. I'm going to attempt to, and if it fails, well, there's a za place right up the road. Because so. right, I'm going to be recording the Paranormal Activity show, like, Friday night, like, probably well into, like, the a.m., so I'm coming over right after. Yeah, uh, I'll probably just, like, start and see what I can do. I mean, I'm not too worried... I want to bake some like cookie things and brownies. I'm not bad at doing that. Well, if you want to save the like little wiener things for me, I could probably do those because I'm used to it. I would prefer you do those. I feel like I don't. It, they're so easy, but I feel like they're not that good when I make them. Yeah. Okay. So. Anyway, uh, let's move on here uh, into I guess what we watched. Yes. We will recap. Our next episode might just be a recap of that of Halloween. Probably. Yes. Um. So yeah. Uh, okay, so I guess it's it would have been your blind spot, so you would go second this time, so I would go first. Yeah. Um. So yes. Uh. Let's see. What did we do? What did I watch? Um. Okay. So first up, I forgot. I watched this last time, but I didn't talk about it. Just totally forgot. But the barn. Uh, the Barn is a film that was kind of local here. Uh, it was made... The guy who made it, uh, I guess he, you know, at least according to IMDb, he lives like 10 minutes from where I work. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty I crazy. knew it was local, yeah. Uh, so yeah, The Barn, uh, it follows a group of teens on Halloween who, uh, one of them is like, can't seem to grow up, he's like kind of immature. Uh, they conjure up these three demons who come back to hit for the flesh, uh, and there's some gore, and they kill them at this, like, barn, and, uh, yeah, set on Halloween. We did a full review of it on 22 Shots, so check that out. They're making a sequel, um, and, yeah, that is The Barn. I thought it was, thought it was pretty decent. Uh, didn't love it, but I thought it was decent. Uh, and then, let's see here, after that, I did... What did I do? Piranha. I didn't talk about Piranha, did I? No. Okay. Piranha from 20... 2010? Piranha 3D. Uh, this was... This was such an interesting time. Like, this year... This year... Uh, like, 28... 28... 2008. 2008. Uh, to, like, 2000. 13 is super nostalgic for me because that's when I got into horror but before I did the podcast mm -hmm. um so yeah and I remember when that came out like everybody hated it kind of but then there were some people that were like kind of coming around a little bit um and it's basically about a kid who is like in a spring break town during uh spring break and his mom's a sheriff and there's a like chasm that opens up under the earth and all these piranhas come flooding out and they're like prehistoric carnivorous piranhas which piranhas are carnivorous so it makes sense and they're big and uh christopher lloyd's in it there's a bunch of cameos uh ving rames is in it uh gianna michaels who is like a big titty porn star um who's in it uh natural boobs i believe uh <laughs> she has a funny death and uh yeah there's uh, a lot of uh fishes and piranha kills and tons and tons and tons of cgi eli roth's in it um did you ever see this no i haven't seen any piranha films really yeah. uh this is a remake of course of the roger corman like 1974 version mm -hmm. uh, or 1976 i think or no 75 maybe 78 78 78 <laughs> yeah um which I've seen I've seen that one first because whenever this came out uh, they put out the original Piranha in like a super sweet lenticular cover DVD that I spent 20, $22 for at Walmart or something when I had no money um, and I watched it and it was pretty cool uh, but see back then I used to like cherish every movie that I bought and I would buy it and I would watch every special feature on it <laughs> <laughs> Um, trying to do that now, buddy. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, it's it's dude. The CGI does not hold up. I mean, it is pretty garbage. It did. I don't even think it was good back then. I just think it was more 
tolerable. Um, but yeah, it's it's not good. Never seen the sequel per, Piranha Three Double D because it has big moves on the cover. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, didn't see that. But uh, this one, it's it, it was okay. I gave it like a six, maybe. All right. Mm, maybe it was six and a half. That was fun. Yeah. Um, and then I watched Tremors Shrieker Island 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tremors Shrieker Island is the seventh Tremors film. The Tremors series is so interesting to me. So you have Tremors, 1990. Such a good film. Amazing. One of my favorite horror films. I think it's one of the best horror films ever made. Uh, it's a buddy film. Uh, it's not. It's it's a little light on the horror in terms of like pure horror, but it, it is scary. Uh, and it has some of the best, like coolest, all practical effects at a time where CGI was starting to come around. Um, was there CGI in 1990? That might have been a little too early. I have no idea. Um, I feel like they might have started CGI's around then um but anyway maybe like 93 or something mm -hmm. uh so yeah all practicals great amazing awesome practicals great acting from kevin bacon and fred ward and uh, uh michael gross who was just kind of a side character in the first tremors and then in tremors 2 you got fred ward back and michael gross again as a side character and then Tremors 3, it's Michael Gross. Tremors 4, Michael Gross. Tremors 5, Michael Gross. Tremors 6, Michael Gross. And again, in Tremors 7, Michael Gross. So, uh, pretty pretty cool how like they they passed the reins. But let's not forget, um, they actually uh, created a TV series back in the 2000s, uh, like 2003 or something, called uh, Tremors... Was it Perfection? Or was it just Tremors, the TV series? I can't remember. But it ran like 12 episodes one season. And it actually was a ratings hit for the Sci-Fi Channel. But they canceled it because they wanted to shift their demographic. Go figure. Uh, it was actually a good show. And then they tried to do another show like a couple years ago. That uh, apparently, you know, it, it seemed pretty good. They did the pilot, but they didn't pick it up. Which is unfortunate because Tremors kicks ass. Um... So I was really excited for this one. Uh, basically, uh, Bert is pulled out of retirement yet again to deal with the Shriekers on, uh, or the Graboids on Shrieker Island, uh, where a rich dude basically genetically modifies some Graboids so that he can hunt them on this island. But they basically turn into Shriekers, and there's the Graboids, and it's an issue. And Bert Gummer doesn't have any guns. Uh, I, I found this one, if I'm being 100% honest, kind of disappointing. I don't think it's a bad Tremors film. In fact, there are no bad Tremors films, but it's definitely the least good out of all of them, uh, which is is a little heartbreaking for me. But it did have one of the in most interesting endings in the series, uh, so there's that. But it it, it felt I don't know where the series goes from here. I don't know if they continue. I would love to see some other characters return, like Grady from the from the second film or. Uh, I feel like Ward might be a little too old now. Um, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Michael Gross is like 70. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would love to see some more Tremors. Uh, even if you, we go with new characters, there's so much to do with it. Uh, I did a full kind of in-depth review on my YouTube channel. So check that out if you're curious. I, I think it was a pretty good review, but we'll just leave it at that. Uh, I gave it a 6 out of 10. So my lowest score of any Tremors film. Oh. Yep. Um, and then I watched... I think I just have one more. Uh, besides my blind spot. I watched um, the uh, Blood Harvest. <laughs> oh no. Blood Harvest. Have you ever seen it? Is this the one with uh, Tiny Tim? Yes. Yeah, I watched it with uh, Joe Bob. Yeah? Yeah. I bought you this, didn't I? Yes, you did. And I, I finally did. got to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a something. It's a vinegar syndrome. So, uh -huh. Blood Harvest follows a, what, a girl 
he's dating this dude, his parents are killed, um, and he has a brother played by Tiny Tim, the musician, um, mm-hmm. her parents are missing, she comes home from college, her, her parents are missing, her home's vandalized, uh, and basically, uh, Jill begins to be stalked by, uh, someone, and her parents, or her friends start disappearing, um, this was a film that was, I believe it was, like, kind of like, uh, one of the, one of those Wisconsin movies, they did, they did, like, a couple of, Blood, Blood Cult was one of them, oh, okay, like, uh, Vinegar Syndrome released, like, a trilogy of Wisconsin-based horror movies, <laughs> and Blood, Blood <laughs> Cult was one, what was it, Blood Cult, Blood, Blood Beat, Blood Beat, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, there's so many Blood, Something Remember movies. Blood Beat? <laughs> yeah, buddy, that was horrible. Uh, yeah, that th- this one's a little better than Blood Beat, probably. Uh-huh. Um, but Tiny Tim plays like this sensitive, um, damaged character, uh, and he o- only walks around in clown makeup. Um, there's some serious head scratcher moments where you're like, "What the hell happened?" Like, uh, <laughs> there's a scene where like one of the characters gets, uh, like like a bucket of blood falls out of her refrigerator and she's just like freaked out and then the dude like is like what's wrong and he runs in and then he just takes her to a bath it's like uh wait (laughs) like y'all are gonna just forget about the bucket of blood that was somehow in the fridge (laughs) like who put that there uh but yeah it's it's funny um the joe bob segments are actually pretty entertaining um i remember that joe bob uh, one of the, he had a couple of like Tiny Tim experts on there. I, it was funny because he was like, it's kind of like putting Tiny Tim down a little bit. Joe Bob was mm-hmm. basically like saying like he really wasn't like anything special, but like he like people he was like a novelty, and it seemed like the people the experts that were there like took a little offense to that, or they they didn't act like it, but I, I feel like they did. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the one expert brought in a video. Of, do you remember this part? Yeah, I told. Yeah, I rem- Yeah, because it was cool. It was like, it was of Tiny Tim watching Joe Bob watch this movie. I think. Right. Yeah, so yeah. back in the eighties, uh, the late eighties or, or like nineteen ninety, Joe Bob hosted the Joe Bob's Drive-In Movie Theater, and he showed horror. Like you know, it was the same thing as Monster Vision and 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 the current Joe Bob stuff, and. Uh, he basically showed Blood Harvest for the TV premiere, and this video was Tiny Tim. So, th- so put this in perspective. Joe Bob currently, in in present day or present day back when this aired, which was like last year, yeah, is watching Tiny Tim on a couch, watching Joe Bob from the eighties or the early 90s watching Blood Harvest (laughs) so Joe Bob is is watching Blood Harvest while watching Tiny Tim watch him watch Blood Harvest yeah it was crazy yeah that is insane too bad Tiny Tim's not still alive to watch Joe Bob watch him watch him watch Blood Harvest (laughs) that would have been crazy yeah that's pretty nuts man um, and of course we know Tiny Tim tiptoes through the tulips with me. He also sang the song in like the first episode of Spongebob where it's like, living in the sunlight, running through the something, having a wonderful time. <laughs> you know, Spongebob? Yeah. The episode where the nematodes like invade the Krusty Krab. Yep. Yeah, that's him. I didn't know that. Yeah. Pretty it's really crazy. obvious when you, yeah. That was his only feature film. Film. Mm-hmm. I would have liked very, to see more. Very weird. I would have liked to see more from Tiny Tim. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a not. I like. I didn't mind it honestly. I thought it was like kind of entertaining. Um, there's like at least one good dirt slit in there. So, yeah, kind of a weird ending. Um, not necessarily weird. Just, uh, I guess it's kind of stupid. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Blood Harvest. I gave it like a four and a half. 
Right. Seems fair. Yep. And uh, then I just have my blind spot. I guess I'll do it when you do yours. All right. Um, oh, also, obviously, I watched The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yes, we watched that. Yes. Yeah, so I did not watch a lot either. Um, in fact, I watched four moves as well. Uh, so first up, uh, we have Homecoming 2005, as per my Survive 2005, which was another Masters of Horror Hair episode. Uh, yeah, Homecoming, I forget which person directed this one, but, uh, oh. I think it's Joe, Joe Dante. Dante. Yeah, Joe Dante did. Um. Joe Dante. Yes, good old. Yes. Um, Homecoming, uh, basically, uh, people suspect that zombies are rigging this election and it turns out that like these zombies uh, that are like ex-war veterans come back from the dead and they want a right to vote and uh, they get it kind of but not really uh, yeah this episode's kind of it's not horrible but it's not great it's kind of goofy it's really goofy. It's um, supposed to be serious. Like, not serious, but, like, the commentary is supposed to be serious. Yeah, the co- yeah, yeah, that's the thing with it. It, it. It's supposed to be serious, but it doesn't really come off that well. I mean, it's like, a, it's a zombie movie, essentially, where they're, like, coming back, and they're like, we want to vote, and then they're, <laughs> you get, like, a scene of dead people just voting, and it all just comes off very goofy, so I think that kind of backfires on them with that uh so yeah i don't i don't really like it that much um i give that one like a four out of ten i think it's definitely one of the weaker masters of horror episodes so mm-hmm. yes uh not not that good what else i is think it's on? like fair haired child is the weakest of the entire series i think and then i'd probably put that one yeah i mean and fair haired child that is 2006 so i don't have to watch that what else did Joe Dante do? What is he known for? Um, Joe Dante made Gremlins. Oh, okay. okay Gremlins yeah. 2. Mm. Uh, Piranha. Oh, okay. The Howling. Oh, okay. Interesting. So he's Very, done a couple. Yeah, interesting filmography for sure. Uh, but yeah, not a good master of horror hair there. Uh, then after that, I watched Bad Milo. It, well, it's more like Bad Milo from 2013 um uh this was another dollar tree pickup and it was on blu-ray so that was cool i like to get my blu-rays at dollar tree and i like when they're actually good moves that's a double bonus there um bad milo basically is about this stressed out businessman who one day um kind of starts out he's like having some problems with his butthole essentially he's like in all this pain and uh you know he's like going to the doctor and stuff like that and one day uh the butthole problem presents itself and it happens to be this giant like demonic hemorrhoid that lives inside of him and anytime he gets overly anxious and stressed it comes out and kind of wreaks some havoc hence bad milo it's like oh milo you're being bad um Yeah, this was a fun movie. Obviously, it's a comedy horror film, uh, and I thought it had some funny moments, and I, it it was just goofy, and Bad Milo, Little Milo is the name that he gives the hemorrhoid, and he's kind of cute. He makes, like, cute little baby noises. He'll just be like, aww, and then at the end, like, at at the end, he really kind of attacks, and that's, like, when he's, like, being really bad. And then, like, his owner has to, like, mess him up a little bit. And then it's, like, real sad because he's all, like, sad Milo. But then it kind of has, like, a happy ending and everything's okay. But uh, I thought the movie was fine. I'm a sucker for cute, dumb things like that. Uh, it, it, it was a pretty good move. I mean, it's not, you know, it's nothing fantastic, but it was a funny little plot. So I gave that, like, a 7 out of 10. I liked it. Um, then after that, speaking of bad, I watched another Survive 05 mood move called Bad reputation um this was on tubi and uh sounded cool uh with the plot i started playing it and immediately you could see it's a pretty low budget film of uh 2005 um the audio in it the quality of the audio is not that great at times um it it just kind of has that cheap feel like something i would make on my camera and uh just you could tell the settings are all very 
cheap. Like there's a house party and it feels, again, it just feels like something I would have shot in my house and just like at school and stuff like that. Uh, the acting's not like fantastic, but it's all right. But basically the plot of the film is it's a rape revenge film. Um, you have this girl at the beginning that's uh, kind of an outcast weirdo. I think she like just moved to the school and uh, her mom is kind of, it, it, it seems like it's trying to like be inspired by Carrie a bit where her mom isn't that helpful towards her and like it's kind of one of the reasons why she's weird because she's just mean to her and not really improving of stuff she wants to do. Like the girl buys a dress for this party and she's like calling her telling her it looks slutty and things like that so uh feels a little Carrie inspired in that way and then the girl goes to this party that this uh nice boy uh you know allegedly nice boy invites her to he's like a football player she's having a fun time they put rupees in her drink and she gets gang raped by these guys um then she's being called a slut throughout the school and uh just going through a really hard time then she decides to exact her revenge so uh Essentially, it's a paint by numbers type of rape revenge film. Uh, there's nothing new or exciting to it, really, but uh, I was really entertained by it. Like, I was super into it, and that's surprising because, you know, me, I have very low tolerance for low budget movies, but I think I like I like the rape revenge films. I'm kind of into those because they are satisfying. It doesn't matter the quality, really. Um, the, like, when, you know, there are some kills and stuff in this movie, and the blood just looks really bad and that stuff comes off as a little cheesy, but I, I liked it. I what movie think was it? Bad Reputation. Oh. 2005. Yes. Yes. Um, it, it's like an hour and a half, you know. It's uh, Like I said, it comes and goes, and uh, I, I was into it. I gave it like a six and a half out of ten. Like I said, it's not fantastic. It, it's obviously very low budget, but I didn't think it was horrible. And then lastly, uh, we have The Purging Hour from 2016. I think this also has an alternative title of Home Video or Home Movie. Um, this was another Dollar Tree pickup. Uh, it looked, by the cover, it looks like a ghost movie, uh, like a stereotypical ghost film where it, it's the cover's like a hand reaching out behind a door. So I, that's what I thought I was going to get. But it was actually a found footage uh, slash almost mockumentary type film. Um, and at first, I was like, oh, cool, found footage. I like these types of movies. This actually could be good. You can make a good found footage film with no budget. It's kind of easy. But uh, the movie really had, like, nothing... Nothing happened in this movie. Like, as far as scary stuff goes. Um, it's just a family moving into this house. Uh, they get a new house. The family is like a mom, dad, uh, their teenage daughter and younger son, and the teenage daughter's boyfriend, and uh, the dad's just like filming around, and it's all set on one night. I think this movie was filmed in one day, actually, I was reading reviews on it, but um, they're filming, and then you're also cutting back to these interviews with these people who knew them, and they're like, yeah, you know, this. we think this is what happened. Just watch the tape. The evidence is right there. And they're like, I think it's the mom who did it. They try to, like, pin it on the mom. and uh, But the whole time, nothing's happening. So I'm like, okay, we're getting into the last, like, 20 minutes. This is where everything's going to go down. And I'm going to forgive the movie because, um, really, the acting wasn't that bad. Like, the characters, I thought, were all doing fine. But all you're doing is getting scenes of, like, the mom doing the dishes and making dinner with the daughter. And then the dad like being awkward with the boyfriend at the grill and then like the mom and the dad getting in an argument and then nothing there's not like sounds going on or anything it's not ghostly um i don't even know what happened at the end honestly like it, it's kind of stupid like something happens it sounds like someone breaks in at the end and then like some creepy stuff supposedly happens nothing happened it's a three out of ten it sucked but that's all my moves. All right. Uh, so I will do my blind spot. My blind spot was the hand that rocks the cradle. And, uh, yeah, this one is a pretty good move. It was, how do you say, not a blind spot? Um, what's the opposite of blind? Sighted spot, I guess. Yeah, it was, it was a sighted spot for me. <clears throat> Again. Again. Yeah, I don't know why you keep doing that. Dude, come on. You do it. I do what? You're dumb. You don't remember movies you watch. 
Um, well, I mean... I, yeah, kind of. Well, what? (laughs) Kind of. But, yeah. Like, I swear, anytime I brought this movie up, you're always like, yeah, i never seen that one. It's like the one on the list that really bothered me that you hadn't seen. Well, good good news, buddy. Yeah, you haven't seen it. Right, yeah. Yeah. Great news. Yes. So, I've seen it, and I... I, okay, so, yeah, I, I didn't remember if I seen it until I started um, to, how do you say, sort of um, had a, like, moment of, like, oh, yeah, I remember that scene. And it was when the dude was getting accused of, um, you know, touching the little girls, the little girl. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that because I felt so bad for that guy because he didn't do anything. Uh Uh-huh. So, anyway, the film... And then then the greenhouse. I always remember the greenhouse, so... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, this this movie follows uh, a woman who's pregnant. She seems like she's doing pretty well off with her husband. Uh, He seems very successful. She seems successful. They live in a nice house. Um, And she goes to, like, I assume the gynecologist... Or a pregnancy doctor? Buddy, that's, that would be the gynecologist, yes. A pregnancy doctor is your gynecologist? They do the same thing? Yeah, yeah buddy. I mean, yeah. Okay. That um, little guy. And he is feeling her breasts, and right away she kind of feels uncomfortable, but then uh, the audience sees that he goes to give her a vaginal exam, and he takes off his glove. Oh, I forgot about that. That's so cr- I always forget, like, why what happened to make it seem rapey and now that just reminded me and that's yeah. Ugh. yeah I guess that was a good way to shoot that because how other way like it'd be so hard it's not to, like accused yeah yeah it'd be hard to like like that definitely lets you know he's doing something wrong mm. um so he basically you know uh does that she feels really uncomfortable she talks about it and then a bunch of other women come forward and the guy kills himself but he had a, a wife and she was like kind of a little younger she's pregnant living in a nice big doctor house and she loses everything uh and the baby she loses the baby too um and she basically decides to pose as a nanny and disrupt the lives of basically she wants to steal the life of the woman that accused her husband so she kind of wants to get rid of the wife but she you know is starting off by just like making everything go wrong uh such as you know uh the wife was responsible for the proposal the husband's proposal to take it to him and she steals it and rips it up and then the wife can't find it uh spills you know like um perfume on her dress so she can't wear a dress just stuff like that but then it, it escalates and escalates and and uh she's you know very uh bitch like uh, played by Rebecca De Mornay. Yes. Uh, she does a really good job. She's really pretty in this movie too. Um, and she's you know she has to seduce the husband and and all that. And she's like she's doing a really good job. Like everybody likes her. Like the kids love her. Um, oh, she's also breastfeeding the young son, the infant Joe, um, which is creepy and weird. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of the movie. It's a thriller. It's pretty good. Um, I thought it was, you know, very solid. I've seen it before a couple times. Mm-hmm. Because you just pick blind spots that aren't real blind spots. Funny. We went over this list together, and we asked each other, have you seen this move? And we would say yes or no. Okay, so why did you give it to me then? Because you said no. <laughs> I have not seen it. Okay, so that is, I give it an 8 out of 10. Really solid move. I'm glad you liked it. That's always been one of my favorite thrillers. I watched it a lot on TV growing up. My mom likes it a lot, too. So So did I. Right. You did years ago, and you do now, so that's cool. Great. Um, Yeah, so my blind spot was Platoon from the year 1986. Uh, This movie has a lot of people in it. Um, You have Willem Dafoe, Charlie Sheen, Keith David, uh, Kevin Dillon, John McKinley, McKinley, which I know from Are We Done Yet, um, Forrest Whitaker, Johnny Depp, freaking Tony Todd, there's a lot of actors, this is like a full star cast as we would know today at least, um, 
and basically this movie is uh you know being kind of narrated by charlie sheen he's like uh, you know writing letters back to i believe his grandmother and he's a volunteer uh in the u.s army and what is this the vietnam war that they're in yeah so he's volunteering at war i think he had like family members his dad and grandfather served in the other wars so he kind of did this to like take after them and uh you know his um sergeant and uh squad leader uh kind of butt heads on certain things and um charlie sheen he just his character he feels like he doesn't really fit in uh with the group he's kind of like i feel like this was a mistake and uh i just don't feel comfortable here and he's saying like how everyone in his squad is kind of like the bottom of the barrel people and you know they just go here and no one really cares about them they don't have any jobs or school or anything waiting for them at home and it's kind of like depressing and uh so the whole movie is uh you know taking place during this war and uh there's like you know some ambushy scenes and there are some scenes of them just kind of hanging out and smoking weed drinking beers and uh chilling and then there's some more like war type scenes and uh then it, there's some sad scenes towards the end and that is the move it is a war move now i'm not going to lie um i was i feel like i wasn't really in the mood for this type of movie because it is like october and i just kind of want to watch like halloweeny moves but it was still a good movie i mean it's a great movie honestly uh it's a I do like war films, like the few that I've seen, and I haven't seen like a ton, uh, mainly like the ones you make me watch are like the ones I've seen, um, but I usually like them, I find interest in them, I think they usually have good characters, and that's no exception with this movie, I thought it was really good, I really liked uh, Willem Dafoe in this, he's become like an actor I really enjoy, I think he can do no wrong, like he's played so many diverse roles throughout his life, and I think he's always really good, he just has like that voice that like really draws you in he's also yeah, super creepy he's looking. someone that i've always like known but never like really paid attention to uh-huh. until like honestly lately like when the lighthouse came out and i was like oh yeah there's like a bunch of movies i like him in like platoon and then uh american psycho he's in there yeah he's not always like the main character too like he's in american psycho i like him in that i like him in well, I used to like the Spider-Man movies a lot, and he played Harry's dad. I mm-hmm. thought he was good in those. And then what else? He was in The Fault in Our Stars, which is like a drama film, that, and he had a really good role in that. It was a small role, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. And like in this movie, you know, the part, they're all like getting high, and Charlie Sheen uh, gets kind of drawn into it, and Willem Dafoe is just like looking at him and like looks all like Willem Dafoe-y and creepy, and uh, it's like just memorizing, and then he like blows into his mouth with the stuff and it's like hypnotic i i like that whole scene of i like scenes of more movies where everyone's chill and like not stressed out for just a moment um mm-hmm. but it is it is a solid movie i think it's uh, well shot i think that the characters are good i told you like charlie sheen i have a hard time now like taking seriously in movies um so when he's narrating i'm kind of like that's charlie sheen um what, what did you rate this movie I gave it an 8 out of 10. I think it could go up, but... And, I, I mean, I do... It has sad moments towards the end, too. Uh, I do think there's moments where I get mad. And the Federal Reserve's focus and, uh, on racial economic... Uh, and... What the hell? What? <laughs> but this video just started playing on IMDb. I don't know if it came through on the mic or not. <laughs> so no, I didn't. No, no I mean just, what the, the hell did. Oh. I don't... Oh, yeah, I guess I wouldn't hear it, obviously. Um... But yeah, Platoon, it's a good movie. I, I would like to watch it again probably one day. Um, but yeah, 8 out of 10 as of now. What good did you move. give Super Bad? 9. White. Or, I couldn't remember. Um, okay, I guess it's my turn <clears throat> again. So uh, let's see here. Randomize, randomize. Oh, I was just I was going to ask you what you're talking about. Then I remembered we have to randomize our moves. I gotta find uh, the list. Oh, wedding we're... singer again. Oh, you have it up. Uh, eight, which is my sister's keeper again. Three, which is <clears> my <throat> cousin Vinny. God damn yes! it! Yes. Like I know you're gonna love it. Okay. No. 
Please wait. It's going to be two so... hours. Uh, let's look. Let's take a gander, shall we? I don't. I feel like it's not. I feel like do. I just don't think it is. But like, let's just see. Um, 119 minutes. We it's have seven left. It's 119 minutes, buddy. We are I'm halfway. Sorry. We are halfway done. My cousin Vinny is two owl hairs, buddy. Oh my god. I am so sorry. I might skip this one. Dude, please, it's funny. Like, I wish you gave me more comedies. Like, you just gave me I, I don't want to give you comedies. Comedies people dying. Suck. I don't want to watch, like, <laughs> but the comedies I'm giving you are classics. Like, why can't you? There's so many good classic comedies that I I'm not seen. a big comedy fan, buddy. Only yeah, the you... classics I like, like Wayne's World. Uh, well, not that one, buddy. Give me other ones that, like, are good. She's chunk. No, give me ones that are funny. Like, you have such a shitty, like, uh, pardon my French. Um, you have, like, a bad sense of humor, I've come to find. Oh, because you didn't love super bad. I did, but Wayne's World and Cheech and Chong aren't that funny. Yeah, they are. No. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, I, I'm very, I really hope that this one doesn't backfire on me like the wedding singer did. But okay. I think my cousin Vinny is, it's a different type of, like, con no, it's no, not Rob Macchio. Buddy, I'm not, I don't know where I'm squeezing this in this week. I might have to... <laughs> have to wait, but you, should we do one for you just in case? Sure, buddy. Okay, just because I have to watch <laughs> seven Paranormal Activity films this week. All right, just as long as my Kenny, my, like no matter what, my cousin Vinny is the next one that you have to watch, though. Okay, all right, R ready for you? Yeah. Eleven. Super bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, four. Days and confused. Okay. Uh, eight. Babe. Which is the weirdest pick? Yeah, I, I, I just kind of... I don't know what... Uh, I just wanted to give you a movie that had an animal in it. You're stupid. Yeah. How long is Babe? Um, it's probably like two hours. <laughs> it That one actually is like kind of like melancholy as well, so... Oh. It might fit the month a little bit. It's an hour and 32 minutes, actually. So. All right, buddy. Let's get into this featured review. I need to go. Where are you going? I gotta upload a video still. Oh, crap. Okay, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so, yeah. Um, our featured review this week is The Empty Man from 2020. Um, and the plot is, on the trail of a missing girl, an ex-cop comes across a secretive group attempting to summon a terrifying spiritual entity known as the empty man yeah so uh this movie is two hours and 20 minutes yes that is um a big thing that you all should know about it um yeah it's two hours and 20 minutes so we were going to possibly see the film called like in what was it spectra or something synchronic huh i think synchronic synchronic yeah which I wish we would have did because that movie was made by Justin Benson, uh, who of course made Spring, oh. and also, for some reason it's showing me his producer credits, which I don't want to see, I want to see his director credits. Not writer credits! Buddy. <laughs> what? Alright, what was that? Yeah, that was um, scary. So you did Resolution. VHS Viral, which sucked, Spring, The Endless, and Synchronic, which, if you look at the cover, it looks like freaking The Endless, so this could be like the third in the trilogy. And you didn't Wait. even tell me. I didn't know. You wanted to see this move and not the other move. I wanted to support our theater that looks like it's on the come down. You're true about that. Anyway, this movie starts out really good. Cold open is pretty great. I was like, wow, this is creepy. It's cool. Uh, remind, I thought it was going to be like the ritual or something. There's these four people hiking and one of them falls into a cave. And there's like this skeleton monster looking skeleton down there. And the dude's just kind of like, like loony. And then they take him back to this little cabin and then like shit goes down and I'm like oh this is th I, like dude it was actually good like it was a good thing mm -hmm. and then uh, as the film goes on 
it's like okay what's going on here boring 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 okay uh there's a kill that's in like a shower where i'm like okay so this is gonna be like a slasher like a like a bye bye man uh slash slender man type like people are isolated after they do this uh essential dude it, this movie's so all over the place now that i'm thinking about it like they do this like candy man-esque like uh, mythology, uh, blow in a bottle on a bridge thing, and then the monster comes and kills you or whatever, and then there's all this cult shit, and I'm like, what the hell is, this movie is so disjointed, if, at one moment, and you think it's gonna be a slasher, another moment you think it's gonna be, like, the ritual, like, some sort of, like, um, like, fucking, um, uh, Wendigo type thing or something like that, and then you think it's going to be, uh, like, a cult film, and then you think it's going to be some sort of freaking, um, like, possession type thing, and then you start thinking it's going to be some sort of, like, ring movie, like, where you die in three days, uh, after doing something, and you're, like, stalked by the thing that's going to kill you. It's, it's just a mess, and it's a jumbled mess, and it's two hours too long. <laughs> Maybe not that long. Two minutes, <laughs> 17 but, minutes. Yeah, it, it's like... Like, the cold open happens, and you're like, great. And then it's two hours of boring. Like, literally, this one movie, kill. This, one movie's so, kill. this movie's so long that I, like, was forgetting things that happened earlier on because it was so long ago. Like, that opening felt, like, by the time we were to the end, the beginning of the film just felt so, like, it wasn't even in this movie. And then even that, the, you were like, well, that one kill in the shower was cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, that happened. Because all the good stuff... All the seemingly good stuff kind of happens at the beginning, and then you get this long period of just this stupid guy you don't really care about going around investigating. investigating. And, the and then the explanation for everything, you're kind of like, what? This is stupid. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand this movie. It was horrible. It was painful. It was like, I could not wait for it to end. Um, the, the, like Normally, when some stranger talks to me about movies we just watched, like I want to engage with them because I like talking about movies. Some kid was like, that was a weird movie, huh? And I was like, yeah, it was too long. I just, like, real short with him. <laughs> like, I didn't <laughs> want to talk about it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it was real long. While you were in the bathroom, like, his girlfriend was in the bathroom. We were, like, standing out there. It was like, he was just like, yeah, that movie was weird, huh? And I was like, it was too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it was horrible. That was, like, probably one of the most boring theater experiences I've ever had. Is it worse I've than ever had. Man for you? Yeah, because Slender Man, at least, we laughed a few times at how bad that was. And when that movie wasn't head. two hours long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I... <laughs> that was, like, the worst editing, like, effects I've ever seen in my life. Um, so, yeah, yeah that one but, was enjoyable with that. Yeah, no, I, and that's what I said to Jeremy, and he's like, yeah, well, if you say the beginning's good, then it can't be a 2 out of 10. A 2 out of 10 means there would be nothing good. And I'm like, no, fucking moron. That means it would be a 0 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exa yeah, exactly. That makes sense. The beginning is so good. Like, I thought it felt like Cold Prey or one of those movies. I w it's just so... I and cannot it's believe how much of a step down it was after the beginning. The beginning is nothing like the rest of the move at all. Like, until the end, there's, like, supposed to be, like, this tie-in finally to the beginning that you forgot about, probably. And it, oh, my God, it's just so bad and so, uh, I hate invest, like, a lot of times investigative stuff takes me out to begin with, but when your whole movie becomes just that. But it's boring investigating stuff. I yeah, will say, when he goes fun. down under the bridge, that was creepy. Yeah. That was, like, one of the coolest parts. Why couldn't the whole movie have been something like that? It's just, like... What the hell was this guy thinking, making this thing two hours and 17 minutes? Like, I cannot believe that this got past editing and, and, and got released. I literally can't believe it. I'm like, what the hell happened? And The Empty Man is such a dumb title. It's a it's like a bad title because that's like to be the butt of every oh, joke. Oh, is this based on a book? It did say that at the end. I forget oh. what it said. It was based off but it must be a shitty book too, graphic, graphic novel novel mm -hmm. dude it okay. was sucked yeah, yeah I didn't was... like this movie at all dude me neither like <laughs> wow uh... it's so funny in one of the reviews they gave it a D minus and they said running an overlong two hours and 20 minutes the empty man probably 
the bastard cousin twice removed from the Bye Bye Man or Slender Man. Not good company. It's a total bore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything else to say on this? Because I really don't. Nope, I mean, I it sucks. I, I highly disrecommend it. Um, don't go see it. All right. I can read some letterbox reviews if you oh, would yeah, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So uh, this one. All right. There's not that many good reviews on here. Um, there's a two and a half star. We'll say that's the good review. Wow. The bye. The bye bye man gone wrong. Not gonna exactly. Because the bye bye man was actually good. This is garbage. Uh, it was pretty boring too. Not gonna lie, I really liked this. The concept was very interesting in movies like this. Fully grasped my attention. My biggest issue with this film would be the extremely long intro, the overall no, length. That's the best part. The, I know the confusing plot and just the terrible low budget effects of lighting, fire, and even an entity costume that looks like it was purchased at Spirit Halloween. This movie was not a horror oh, film yeah. like this trailer makes it out to be. If anything, it's a thriller, okay? I would watch this again since I went into the theater tired and came out with a bunch of questions. I did have a really good time with this, though I do see why people hate it. What? That review made no sense. I know. He said I really like this, and then he said beside. He said my biggest issues, and he named like 50 problems with the movie. So, okay, but that was like two and a half. Um, then a one-star review says, First of all, the Empty Man is a terrible name for a supernatural entity and also a terrible name for a movie. It's literally it's literally setting itself up for a plethora of empty puns in people's reviews. That being said, the only thing empty here is this movie. Empty of scares, good characters, good editing, quality filmmaking in general, etc. The Empty Man feels like a January horror movie dump month. Dump month? This, yeah. This movie really doesn't have any personality. It's dull and so convoluted that you have to wonder what they were thinking. The film is such a mess, although there are a couple of scenes with interesting ideas. This guy is on point. It begins with like a 15 to 20 minute scene that goes on for far too long, but it was the best part. Introducing the title card, considering they weren't the main characters. I don't characters understand of the film. why it goes on. Okay, okay. They're saying it goes on too long because the characters aren't the main characters. But at the same time, yeah. like if if you're if the scene is good, it doesn't matter how long it goes on. Yeah, like I get his point. Like it because that annoyed me too. It's like you think this. Well, movie it's is only be... annoying in retrospect because you would yeah. rather be with those characters. Yeah, exactly. So he says that, then it says. Anyway, the film itself is too long. Way too long. Girl who asked for that, it says in here. Nearly two and a half hours for what? In what <laughs> world would anyone for think what? this? <laughs> he capitalized that. He sounds so mad. Yeah. For what? <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hours for what? <laughs> In what this world would so anyone think this film justifies being that long? It says, it's not the worst film I've seen this year, and thankfully, unlike The Turning, this movie tries to have an ending. I like The Turning better. Yeah, that's saying something. So because of this and a complete meh idea that I thought were that I thought was unique, I gave it a one. This so is, To me, this is the worst theatrical movie I've ever seen. Um, I... I think I would have to be with you on that. I mean, I've seen other bad movies, but the fact that this one's a bad movie and it's as long as it is really kind of sets it down to the bottom. It's definitely the worst year on my list for this year. I'll yeah. tell you that. Uh, I liked The Turning more. I liked Underwater more. Uh, I oh, yeah. liked... What was the other bad one we seen? Ring? Ring 2? I would, I would go watch Ring twice over this. Yeah. Um, uh, or not Ring. Grudge. Well, yeah. A or ring. Rings. I'd rather do a fe too. double feature of rings in the grudge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and finish it off with a good old turning. Um, <laughs> but, like, to, I would rather watch Slender Man again than this. I actually think this is the worst theatrical movie I've ever seen. I think it's worse than Slender Man. What did I rate Slender Man? Tell me. Tell me what I rated it. I cannot remember, dude. I Probably a three. <sighs> I know. It up. Unless we were generous. Um, what did you rate this? I give this movie a three. A three. A That's three? 
Based on what? I guess the intro. That's a whole three points. Uh, I guess also because, to be fair, there were scenes I thought were shot well. Like, I think the scene when they're on the bridge. Yeah, but don't don't you think, like, having a completely drawn-out movie, like, counter counteracts those points that you gave it positively? All right, buddy. I shall give it a two. I gave Slender Man a three. This oh, really? is a two. Okay, well, if I... I don't know... Uh, I should go... I don't know if I rated Slender Man... You gave Man Slender Man a three. Okay, then I shall give this a two as well, in that case. Yeah, it's a okay. two. Avoid. Yes, for you sure. You should have went and seen Synchronicity. I know, buddy. Synchronic. That's what I said. Um, so, anyway, that's it for the episode. Another one in the books. That's 39. How many more weeks do we have in the year? Let's see. We have mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, kind of eleven. So mm-hmm. eleven more eps would bring us to what? Thirty-nine, forty-nine, like fifty. Yeah. So we'd be like two. We we would be two off. Yeah, I Which guess. Is pretty yeah. good. I know we did it. Yeah, we did it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's gonna be it. We only, yeah, only missing two weeks in a year is pretty impressive for us. For me. For me. Not you. For me. <laughs> yeah. Missing two of anything in a year is like, like a big success for me. I know. I'm very happy with uh, what we've done here. I missed more days of school than. <laughs> <laughs> I missed more days of school than than episodes that we've had. Pretty. Pretty good. Not that's not good. I missed like fifty episode, fifty weeks, fifty days a year. I think. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's it. So we'll see you guys next time with another one. Peace out. Peace.